So these are the mail order plants that I got last year from Etsy. Somebody just took cuttings, wrapped them in wet newspaper and mailed them to my house from uh, somewhere like Bradenton, Florida. So it was only an hour away, but still how many days does it go through the post office? Anyway, um, I got lazy and didn't want to, well, I had dug up some of the grass and weeds and stuff before, but, um, I'm just putting the, putting the, um, landscape fabric over the top of it and I'm going to mulch it. And, uh, I asked my father to, stepfather to take that, uh, electric. It doesn't work anymore. I asked him to remove it and, uh, he hasn't done it. So, um, I'm kind of working around it, but you can see there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, odd number. Nice. Actually, a couple of these have two in them, but still odd number. Um, and <clears throat> these should grow at least as tall as the fence, if not taller. And uh, hopefully they do so soon. I think they died back in the wintertime, but what I did was I kept these in the greenhouse, and so they flourished. Uh, yeah, I have a lot of plants that aren't evergreen that knock back in the winter time, and they're, while they're beautiful, while it's summertime, um, I need to fill my space with a little bit more evergreens. So if you look here, I have a whole bunch of blue junipers down the right-hand side and some hollies. Actually, I'm going to get four more blue point junipers to go over by that uh, electric pole. And then I have some Walter's viburnums and I have some palms and or sweet viburnum, sorry, sweet viburnums and palms. And then I have these um, bushes right here, uh, silver thorns. And actually to me, the roses are considered evergreen, but <clears throat> these do fabulous during the winter time. Like this right now is, um, rose season <laughs> look at those they're just gorgeous i'm gonna um i have a an edger and i'm gonna try to do that but i don't know this is sugar sand and edgers just don't seem to work well uh also these are the lilies and they stayed evergreen and i planted a bottle brush there kind of accidentally i really wanted a rose bush there but you know what i'm leaving the bottle brush uh these are the crepe myrtles they uh, obviously are deciduous, but they're growing their leaves back and, you know, more palms and more roses. Look at these. These are, um, oh, you can't really see. In the, these are purple flowers and they look beautiful, but they're, they're purple, actually really purple, pinky purple. Um, and then I have a whole bunch of these. I always forget the name of it. I'll put it on the screen. Um, that are growing in my grass, which I love. I want this whole thing to be that. Um, only problem is, is it makes it tougher to, um, to, oh, it's flux, flux. It makes it tougher to mow here, um, which I already have a problem mowing all this grass. And there's beautiful, um, oh shoot, what's the one name of these? <clears throat> I guess I took it off. Um, I'll put it on the screen. Duchess du Brabant, I think that's what that one is. And then I went and got new ones of these drift roses because I wanted three and three and three or nine, nine uh, drift roses because they're just so beautiful. But definitely have to figure out what to do with these weeds here creeping up. And then of course my fire bush uh, dies back for the winter. I tried. I put a big scaffolding over it and covered it for the winter and it froze anyway. And we didn't really have that cold of a winter. I think there were maybe two spells that it was co too cold. And then you can see this is my agave, which is, I have bricks here because I'm blocking the ones that, it's just grown babies all over the place and the flocks. And so one of the things I did was I threw a whole bunch of seeds down here. And so now I feel like I can't take all these weeds out because I don't know which ones are seeds and which ones are weeds, um, which ones are flowers and which ones are weeds. But ultimately I'm gonna take all of this and incorporate it all with mulch because I, I have to mow in the middle now and I don't wanna do that. 
And I definitely want to keep these silver thorns low because I have here, I have these viburnums and they're going to be huge. They can be 15 feet tall. I actually feel like I need to get one more in the middle over there because uh, I have a big hole right there. <laughs> so we'll see how that works, but probably I can get one more in the middle, but then I'll have four. And I don't like even numbers, but we'll see. Anyway, if I circle back around here, you could see that uh, the horses killed that tree there. So that's a stump. And then um, these are my beautiful new uh, evergreen area. And I definitely want to get a lot more evergreens. I do have a ton of boxwoods. Look at this mess. This is a beauty berry, but it's got all this grass growing in the middle of it. So I have to figure out how I'm going to mow this all down. Uh, the beauty berries don't have a problem cutting all the way down to the ground. They'll come right back up, but I want to get rid of this grass without putting grass poison down. And here we are. I actually need to get some more to cover this area here. And then um, and I'm back to here. So I'm, this morning before work, I am mulching. I wanted to give an update on these, I'm gonna call them Brazilian plumes. <laughs> But yeah, they're doing amazing. I just think it's terrific that somebody can just clip cuttings off of their bush, stick them in wet newspaper, mail them to me, and uh, here it is six months later, and they're thriving. And I guarantee they are going to get huge. And all of them survived. Amazing. Can't wait to show you when they uh, grow and bloom.